really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard. Which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Yes, technically, I should be wishing you a happy new year, right? For those of you who stayed up to welcome the new year, if you are like me, wondering where the 2016 go and what is in store for me in 2017, well, it happens to us all the time. The year runs out and you're like, what have I achieved? Another one begins and you set new goals and new objectives and the cycle continues. Well, on the show today, we are seriously talking about how we need to begin to live a more conscious life. And I have two authors, accidental authors I call them, who've written books in 2016 that got me thinking about your mind and your money. I'll be sharing all those thoughts that they shared in their books with you, and hopefully you will have a more conscious life in 2017. Once again, welcome to Seriously Speaking. My name is Adesuwa Onyenukwe, and this is 2017. Just in case I forgot to wish you a happy new year. Once again, happy new year. It's 2017, and I'm very happy. It was a tough 2016, all right, but I'm happy that I read two books that at least did something to my life. One of them was Answering the Call, that was written by my next, my first guest, Mrs. Nadu Denouye. It's nice to have you on the show. Thank you very much. I don't know if you remember, I don't know what got into you in August when you sent a letter to everybody, an email to all your friends, that guess what, this is what I have done, I want you to read it, I want you to, whatever it was. What was the message that you were passing across when you were asking all of us to read this book, Answering the Call at that time? Well, actually, answering the, the August one was when the paperback version came out. I'd actually launched it in mm -hmm. January, mm -hmm. which was my 60th birthday. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a book I'd been wanting to write for ages. And it actually took 10 years. It was 10, <laughs> it was 10 years in the making. And, you know, it's really to tell that story, to share that story about finding myself. You wouldn't believe it, uh, but, you know, I started at 40 basically. So is it a function of a fool at 40 is a fool forever? <laughs> I believe so. You know, maybe like, uh, yes, I, I believe so. That if you're at 40, something happens. I thought it was just for me, mm -hmm. but then I found out that really there are phases of life and it's something that happens around that midlife transition yes. and not just for women. Oh, not just for women. But not for you, for you, you talk about attending a funeral and then it suddenly dawned on you that someday you're gonna go six feet under. 20 years, you're still here. 20 something plus now, because well, it's 27. No, the, attending the funeral was actually maybe like two, three years ago now. Okay. And that was at not having written the book because I'd had this plan of writing the book right from, well, retirement. I said when I retired, and I retired early at 50, mm -hmm. I said that I, this was one of the things I was going to focus on. And 10 years, eight years later, at the time of the funeral, I hadn't done this. And okay. I said, well, hmm, who knows? Anything can happen. I better sit, be serious and write this book. By any standards, you're a successful woman, you know, an engineer, you set up a company in 1986, you retired in 2006, you know, had everything together. But you said in the book that um, you were successful by all standards, yet you still had questions. Seemingly successful. Oh. Seemingly successful, really, because you know what you define as success. Because I, I found out, since found out that life is not about, I'm not here because of me. God put me here, and it's not about my decisions and, and what I want to do us? in life. I believe so. I believe so. Particularly for believing Christians, it's not about us. We're not here, we're not random beings. Yeah, and so God has brought us here for a purpose, and we need to discover that purpose. So mm -hmm. when we live life and we're not conscious of that, what we're here for, then, you know, you just live day to day randomly and all that. So for all I was termed to be successful, I was living a life of mere existence, you know, just following the normal roads of life, going to school, doing well, getting and married, getting married and having, this, kids. having kids and, you know, well, starting a successful business, supposedly. But 
there was a lot more. So my definition of success and being the best mm -hmm. changed radically. So could it be spiritual? You know, sometimes it's like, as we get older, we begin to ruminate and think, okay, so what am I going to leave behind? Is it about that? Or is it something that people, even younger people, can take away that they need to begin to think like that? It's not just spiritual. It's the, actually, you can see it in the order of life. And you yeah, know, I see in that book, you're always talking human... about the cosmic, <laughs> no, making it no, so not clear. Cosmic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, human cycle of life, you know, there are different phases of life, and it's all a progression. Mm -hmm. You know, each, each phase builds onto the other. And really, life is about growth to maturity. So right, you know, at the early, later part of life, and it's not just about knowing God or what have you, mm -hmm. but later part of life, you know, around uh, the middle life, you know, there comes a time that you need, you know, if you get to that point, you know, there's uh, questions that are asked, who am I? What is my purpose? And I think that God has, you know, fashioned it this way, you know, put it in us to begin to ask those questions. The good thing about it is you've decided to do something about it and put it in book form mm -hmm. to help other people to read and unravel, because that's what right. you said to us, unravel. Yes. And I found it quite unraveling. But I'll take a break mm -hmm. so that I can also introduce my other guests to also mm -hmm. unravel things for me in the financial sector. And hopefully, we all come back together and leave the nuggets from our books with our viewers today. Thank you, Nadu, for sharing with us. Thank you very much. Thank and you. And thank you for watching so far. We'll be back. Well, I didn't realize that at age 53 almost, I'll still be learning things about finance. And I thought it was too late for me. But then again, this book happened in 2016. It's called The Smart Money Woman by Arese Ugu, and it turned things around. While I was happy for my daughters and younger women out there that they have something they can work with, I was able to take a few things out of it. So it's my pleasure to introduce in this new year, Arese Ugu. Come on. The good thing about RSA is that uh, I can afford to tell you, boy, you're here. And let me see what she will say. <laughs> you're welcome, darling. Thank you so much I'm for so having me. I'm so proud of you. Thank proud you. that, you know, some woman, it doesn't matter that a lot of financial books are there. It didn't matter that many people were already doing what you want to do. Yeah. Just set out to write this book and then boom. <laughs> I've been so lucky. I, I didn't expect the response that I got from the book, but. It is overwhelming, like how women will send me emails and DMs on Instagram saying, I said, this book has changed my life and it's reframed the way that I think about money. Because it's in a very African um, context. I felt like the book dealt with a lot of issues that young women oh, like me. I yeah. be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wanted to be very real because in university, I was obsessed with this um, series called Sex and the City mm -hmm. and things like Gossip Girl. And one of the things I loved about them was that they showcased um, New York so in a very real way. So you'd hear about having breakfast at Sarah Best or going to the plaza or, you know, about Manolo's. Very, like, um, American brands or very New York brands. Mm -hmm. And you kind of felt like you were a New Yorker. So I really wanted the book to do the same kind of thing for Lagos. So that even if a foreigner yeah. was reading it, they would sort of guess the vibe of what it meant to be, you know, to Nigerian be. or live in Lagos because of all the brands. So it was that were deliberate. Mentioned. It was very deliberate. So it was a conscious thought. It was. But started writing the book. Was it conscious though? Okay, you know, I like to tell people that it wasn't, you know how people grow up saying, oh my God, I'm going to be an author or I'm going to write a book one day. It was never a goal. In fact, your mom um, said... <laughs> my, mom, <laughs> my mom was reading the book, and at one point she was really laughing, and she was like, oh my God, Arisa, you've done so well, but I have to be honest, I'm not trying to be mean, <laughs> but out of all my four children, you are the last person that I expected to write a book. Yeah. So what prompted it? Because, I mean, there you are, a young woman working in the financial sector, just yeah. going through a, a painful separation yeah. with a husband you thought it was forever. <laughs> yes, I definitely thought. <laughs> as, you're very, um, as your typical African millennial, I thought my life was going to go in a certain progression, you know, get married, have babies, have a fantastic job, be a rock star in that job. <laughs> and, um, but then I found that, you know, we're not pre adequately prepared for emergencies. So here I am, my marriage falls apart, I'm 27, and I basically have to start my life all over again. Find a new apartment, buy new furniture, all with like my one-year-old child in tow. Um, and it was extremely expensive. And I just thought, it was like an aha moment for me because I thought, clearly you have not been saving and investing enough as in for this to happen to you. So it got me thinking about the fact that, you know, 
young women like me or p young people like me, you might be really smart, um, but if you don't understand how money works, you're not going to make um, great decisions. So I was wondering, who is talking to like African millennials like me in a, in a language that we understand? Because you know my generation, we don't like to hear things in a very preachy way. We don't want to hear, don't do this and don't do that. But if you say it in um, stories and a language that we understand, we're going to like um, identify, identify with invite. it like mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. So how long did it take you to write the book? Because you've been writing a column already. Yeah. You already had these little videos you were doing, trying yes. to teach women to be smart, smart money. Smart with their money, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it took me a year and a half, which now I'm finding is not necessarily like a particularly long, long time, long. but I, you thought it was I set this unrealistic goal for myself of how I was going to write the book in three months. And then when I didn't write it in three months, I was beating myself up. It was such a tough process, but I'm so glad, like, I took the time and I didn't rush it because um, I don't think that would have had the impact that it has. It's a spot at which I must take a break so okay. that we can bring it together. Bring it together at the panel discussion. Thank you, Arese. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you for staying tuned because we'll be returning with Arese and Nadu in a short while. Welcome back. It's still a happy new year. Let's switch my viewers together. Happy New Year. Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. <laughs> happy New Year. You know how it is and you experience something and you want to share it. Now we've learned about these two authors, but um, this one changed my mind. Or oh, this is more like my level. This is my age. <laughs> you know, I could connect with getting to a point in life and you're like, oh my God, is this what it is like? You know, I was like, you know, I was telling myself, you say I'm getting close to the end. <laughs> And then smart woman, smart money woman, what it did for me was a man. This is how these young girls think. You know, I mean, there's even somebody called her this one in the yes, book. Yes, <laughs> she's very different from you. <laughs> yes, she is. Final giveaways on yeah. smart money woman. Don't do this, do this, do this. Just tell me like that. Um, I think one, especially with re recession and the fact that inflation is around 18% and it's probably going to go up, I think people need to spend intentionally. Um, you need to figure out what you want the money that you earn to do for you. And you need to cut your expenses ruthlessly on the things that you don't care about and spend on the things that you love. Yeah. How about you, Nadu? What are the things that they should know as they're going into 2017? I think, again, like I've said, you know, you need to have something that's the driver. So do okay? one, two, three. Know who you are. What's your purpose? At least try to determine that, you know? And then when you do that, make sure you're living life consciously. Be aware of the choices that you are making. And then have a plan for your life. When you have that plan, you have then to work towards it, learning and growing and being disciplined. Discipline, you know, you can start with the right ideas and all that, but without discipline, you can't finish. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for Thank having us. I appreciate Thank it. We Thank have you this done us. eventually, and remember, Personal development is important, so also is leadership. We'll see you again next week. Have a wonderful 2017.